Play hard, grind hard, stay hard, no, we stay out, make your way out, but I just can't stop, won't stop hustling, but I just... Atlanta Season 3, Episode 10, titled Terrere, Terrere. Have you pronounce it? What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I go by the name of the Black Abstract. If you're new to the channel, uh, I want to give a shout out to all my grinders and grindettes that support this channel. I greatly appreciate it. I know I've been a little absent for the last few days, but as you know, or if you don't know, I'm from Buffalo, New York, and uh, you know the tragedy that took place. Uh, it's been a lot going. Um, uh, just big shadow, big cloud over the city. Uh, it's just been it's been hectic. You know, I've been trying to do my due diligence to to help out as best as I can. Um after finding out about the tragedy, found out that uh, my fiance actually works with the son of one of the gentlemen who uh was uh fatally wounded in the shooting, the security guard. So uh we came up with a plan to try to help him out the best way we can. Um and as you know I got a plet I got a couple of side hustles that I do. One of them is making shirts so I said, how can I help out? And I came up with the idea of Pray for Buffalo, uh, which is the slogan. I got this uh, logo as well as another logo. Um, and if you guys want to support the best we can, and proceeds will go to uh, that gentleman's family, uh, you can go to PrayForBuffalo.com, um, and you can check out what you got. You just, okay, I got the hat. Uh, you can DM me, hit me on Twitter if you want a certain colorway as well. Uh, they only need like 20 bucks. Um, and I'll ship them out to you. If you, if you, if you buy $50 or more, I'll, I'll give you free shipping. Uh, but that's my way of doing my due diligence, uh, and helping out the best way I can. That's what I'm trying to do. Like I said, pray for Buffalo.com. Um, anyway, let's get into this episode of Atlanta. Shout out to everybody that had ordered a shirt, put in, it's been nonstop. I got probably about 20 orders waiting right now. I got a knockout. I ran out of uh, shirts, so I gotta, I gotta wait for some shirts to come in. It's crazy. Uh, but this episode of Atlanta, well, listen, we finally get a episode with Van. And you know how I do it. It's the top WTF uh, moments of the episode. We'll break them down and we'll go one by one uh, about what happened. So we see that uh, Candace, yes, you remember Candace from the first season? Uh, you know, when Van failed that piss test and she had, she was digging through the garbage Trying to, uh, sh <laughs> trying to like put a uh, diaper pee inside her um, water bottle so she could pass the urine test. Yes, that Candace, you know, Candace that likes messing with all the athletes, the ballers, and whatnot. So she's back, and listen, I will say she was quite eye appealing. Uh, kudos to Candace, great seeing her again. Uh, but we're back in Perry, uh, and that leads us to the first WTF of this episode. Which is, uh, they're at the table, uh, and they talk about what girls talk about, and, uh, Candace thinks she sees a ghost, the way she acts, and, uh, we see that it happens to be, uh, Van, she walks in the restaurant, she sees Van, and Van gives her a look like, yo, I don't even know you, so I'm like, is this Van, you know, I'm like everybody else the whole episode, I'm like, is this Van? Like, who is this person? Like, this this can't be Van. Obviously, she has to know who she is. It has to. It hasn't been that long. Uh, but sure enough, she uh she winds up, I guess, coming around to like she knows her, and uh you know she introduces her to the rest of her friends. Uh, the friends go by the name of Yoshi and uh, Shanice. So they're all having lunch, and I believe Candace is there to pee on somebody, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, actually, by the end of the episode, we saw that that was true. So I think she might have just filled in for uh, Candace, uh, the friend did. So that's kind of uh, that's weird. <laughs> uh, next WTF, we see that uh, um, Van has a accent now. She has this fake French accent going on, and she's carrying around this baguette in her purse. Uh, and we see that she leads them to her apartment, and um, they're hanging out and um. Candace is kind of skeptical. She's worried. She's looking through the magazine. She see that Van uh, got some small time modeling gigs, and uh, we see that, <laughs> and we see that they're actually, um, you know, she's she's kind of doing all right for herself, I guess, all things considering. You know, seeing we also we also learned that Van is dating uh, f Swedish actor Alexander Skarsgård, and um, she remembers that she has to run some errands and offers. Uh, to take Candace and her friends with her on a trip across Paris. 
And, uh, and the next WTF, the ladies arrive at Scott's got an apartment, and things take a turn for the weird, even more so. You got this gentleman, he's dancing to uh, Ashanti's, oh, baby, and he is feeling it, all off rhythm. Uh, he's just enjoying himself, and he's like, yo, I got an idea. How about we just all, you know, take our clothes off, and uh, we start getting, you know, what's going on. Um <laughs> Candace is trying to get a moment of, uh, just a, a quick moment with Van to kind of just pick her brain, but Van's just so moving around, she doesn't even have time to let her do that. Uh, we see that Van actually goes and takes some drugs, sprinkle them around in uh, Scott Skyer's um, apartment or his room, and uh, she breaks out, and Candace is looking like, yo, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Van goes and tells the hotel clerk that uh, Scott Skyer is having a... Uh, overdose and she runs up there and um next thing you know uh van goes outside to a box and she's looking or expecting a package and this package doesn't arrive so she now she's looking like yo what is going on which leads us to the next wtf moment uh when they're standing there and they go back to the bikes uh the motor scooters we see that actually uh they get cornered in a group by a group of goons um who have Took it a night, flattened their tires, uh, and they refer to Van as uh, Tyrer, which is the title of this episode. I'm not sure who that is, where that came from, how she got the nickname, but this is what they refer to. And we see one of the gentlemen have was like a crowbar, um, and the other two, they're just ready for war. Uh, behind them, you can see a gentleman in a car who happens to back up to one of them, and that gentleman has a crowbar, and he breaks the window and this guy gets out starts wailing on him and a, a fight ensues and the gentleman and the gentlemen that were in front of them get distracted turn around and then we just see zazie beats running off or van's character just running off like come on let's go <laughs> so they're running off um and they take another they take a, uh, another uh trip after barely, narrowly getting out of that situation. Which leads us to the next WTF moment of this episode. Uh, we see that um, uh, Van takes the ladies to a museum where she threatens the curator Emilio and demands a package. Emilio insists that the package is not meant for her, but can he, he can arrange more. Uh, an enraged Van beats Emilio with a hotter than baguette that she still has. Uh <laughs> Then she claims the package before leaving the museum. Yo, she was beating the hell out of his ass with that hard ass piece of bread. How, yo, how can you tell your boys, uh, yo, what, bro, what happened to your teeth? Yo, man, I got hit by some baguette, man. <laughs> I got hit by a hard ass baguette. Like she up there twirling this this baguette around like she one of the Ninja Turtles. Like she leaning out there or something. I said, Van is crazy right now. And we still, as an audience, we're still trying to figure out what's going on. Because we don't know if this is an alternate universe. We don't know if this is a dream sequence. We honestly don't know. That's how Atlanta's been this episode or this season. It's been completely unexpected. Everything's been left field. And um, it's, it's, it's nothing short of uh, interesting, to say the least. Uh, <laughs> uh, before she leaves, the, uh, she claims the package before she leaves the museum. She has the, one of the girls get it out of vase. Uh, which it was on top of, and um, they take off into the night. Uh, next WTF, Van decides to take this lady to an exclusive restaurant where she works with her boyfriend, Marcel. Uh, realizing that Van is acting extremely out of character, Candace decides to confront her friend. Uh, upon her confronting, we can see in the background what's inside the package that Van has been chasing down and it as a set of hands. Uh, yes, these are actual human hands that they're cleaning, washing, and for some reason, uh, frying. Yes, they're, they're frying them just the way you would fry any other thing, dipping them into the, the butter, the sauce. I'm like, why is this, why is this happening right now? I'm <laughs> like, why is this happening? Um, Candace confronts Van about her drastic personality change and her arrogant behavior. Uh, however, Van counters that Candace is merely jealous because she is no more cooler. She is no more the cooler friend uh, among the two. Um, which I never got that vibe from Candace at all. I saw her the whole episode. She was genuinely, genuinely upset and really cared. You can tell for Van's character. Uh, 
hands all aside. You know, she stuck it out with her, and she was trying to tell her. Uh, as we seen, and and this is what my my fiance was saying, is it seemed like she had uh, borderline personality disorder. Like she 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 didn't grasp who she was until a trigger word happened, which was um, uh, Candace mentioning her daughter. Uh, upon mentioning her daughter, we see that she, uh, you know, she kind of snaps out of it, and she has her she has her mental break, which she needed. She needed to flush all that shit out and cry, and, and come to grips with what was going on. Uh, <laughs> Next WTF, we see the ladies at the table uh, eating, and they get the they got to put a towel over their head. I guess that's part of a ritual. They're at this long table with all these fancy people, uh, and as we know, the hand is what they're cooking. So everybody gets bought some hand and. Uh, I didn't say ham, I said ham, uh, in a skillet, and they put these towels over. We know why, it's not to gross the people out, but to, uh, <laughs> to the consumer, she's saying, uh, it's just a tradition we follow for whatever reason. I'm like, wow, they probably be getting poisoned for, I don't know how long. Uh, but anyway, uh, the two girls decided to take the mask off for whatever reason. Uh, one of them did, and she saw that they were actually eating ham. And uh, she was out of there. <laughs> they both were out of there. I'm like, okay, this isn't going to be good. Um, next WTF moment, we see that uh, Candace and Van finally have that heart-to-heart. -heart. They're in a bench somewhere. And we get the whole rundown of how Van uh, started with her new life in, in, in Paris. Um, prior to this, we did see that she was talking about getting married with Marcel. They were in love. Uh but like I said, Lottie really triggered, that really broke through her armor and triggered uh, something inside her that caused her to shed all of this, whatever she's been holding on to and having this emotional break. Um, uh, she also claims uh, that she she uh, has to discover herself in a row because after, um, I guess, losing her job, uh it forced her to kind of, she didn't really know what role she was supposed to play because she was, she was just so used to being, you know, like kind of the breadwinner and having a job and holding it down. Then you got Earn, who's off making money, getting his own money now, and she really doesn't have to fill that, that big void or role. Um, and I just think her losing her job might have just been too much. And, uh, you know, some people had that, man. They have, it's, it's a lot going on, and they just had these psychotic breaks, and, uh, unfortunately, her led, led her to Paris, uh, where she, I don't know if she's going to be facing criminal charges, but <laughs> she's just out there wilding. Uh, like I said, this WTF, sorry, I went on a rant after I said the WTF, uh, ends with Candace and uh, Dazi having a, or Van, I'm sorry, I keep saying her real name. They're having a heart to heart on the bench, and like I said, we, we, we hear the lead up, which led into this whole entire uh, idea and personality that that van is, uh, displaying. And, um, you know, she actually thought about committing suicide, which I was like, Whoa, that was a huge WTF. She was on the throughway or the freeway driving. She was on the 285 South show. Shout out to Carlos Miller, Chico Bean and DC Young and Clayton. You up, you know, no, nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, but she was, uh, driving. She closed her eyes and you know, she woke up, she was in the other lane, and that was the first time, I guess, she she, she decided to take her life. Uh, upon that happening, she just had a, a, a psychotic break, uh, had money for a flight, and she just kind of just went on, and and um, it was a bunch of, it's a bunch of things in between she was speaking on as well. You know, the fact that uh, she said when she did try to kill herself, her daughter read right through her, and she's like, she could tell, like, Mommy, you try to do this. Why would you, you know, without even saying this stuff, this is what she's telling Candace that she's thinking. And I'm like, man, that's kind of deep. Um, it ends with uh, Van actually accepting, you know, just her behaviors, who she's become. And uh, she's even back to talking normal. And uh, <laughs> it's just, you know, that was pretty much the end of it. Uh, decent episode, man. I like it. It was different. It was different. It was different as hell. For a series finale, Hey man, it's Atlanta. It is what it is. Um, but yeah, I I, I, don't, I won't say I enjoyed this. I I just thought it was, you know, I'll say I enjoyed it. I, I just thought, you know, where's Earn? I thought everybody was gonna just reunite at one point in time. You know, they come to, 
uh, wherever she's at, or I don't know how it went. But anyway, in there, you do see some, um, next WTF, you do see some posters of Paperboy when they're crossing the street, uh, when she almost gets hit by the car, she's, you know, uh, after they escape the goons, um, we see that they got a poster in the background of Paperboy, so he, he does exist in this, uni uh, this universe. Uh, this WTF, in the end credit scene, as you can see, uh, Earn, they, it flashes to Earn. He's at a hotel somewhere. He gets a uh, call to come to the desk. He has a bag waiting for him. And uh, he's telling the guy, it's not my bag. The guy insists on giving it to him. We see Earn, uh, you know, going through it. Uh, he sees a T-shirt he likes. He's like, I'm keeping this. The rest of the stuff, he's kind of like, you know, just normal stuff. Uh, in the picture uh, is also a picture in there that he, he looks at. He doesn't pay too much attention to. Uh, but, you know, he walks away, and then they zoom up on the picture of who it is, and uh, I don't know who the hell is, gentlemen. If you know who he was, post it in the comments. I'm hearing that's Boat Guy from earlier in the season. Uh, I don't know why he's relevant or if it's just a little nod or an Easter egg or something. I don't know. Uh, if you know more, talk to me in the comments. You tell me what it's about. Um, I think I've covered anything. I'm sorry. Listen, it's been a long day. I told you I've been busy with these orders. Uh I've been, phew, it's it's tough. My my eyelids is real heavy, but I, you know, I wanted to I wanted to to to, to plow through this joint and, and, and try to get this done. Uh, did I enjoy this episode? Yeah, I did. I thought it was <laughs> thought it was different. I, I in terms of serious season finale, I would have loved to see the whole gang back together again one last time. You know, I knew for at one point in time they was gonna kind of just uh, sneak in there and, uh, and um, steal, but um. Still a show, but that didn't happen. Uh, <laughs> but it is what it is. Uh, I love the fact that they they explained what was going on with uh, Van, and they gave her, her own episode because uh, she is part of the team. She is part of the crew, uh, whether you like it or not. Um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, make sure you post the comments below. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. As always, peace, love, and prosperity. I ain't a black abstract one.